So, welcome to the seventh EVA broadcast, uh, Conversation Club, with Jonathan Crone and Mo Hassan. And they will be discussing the Project Controls Paradox. Now, Jonathan, I've known for donkey's years. I think it must be 20 years? Yeah. Maybe longer. No, 20 when years. Put, 20. 2000s when I first met you, Steve. Yeah, we were both young then, weren't we? Yeah, and tell me about it. You, I think you just started on T5. Yeah. Um, were you were you with Langs then, or was that? Uh, that no, was no, I was with BAA. Right. Okay. And uh, it was because you you were introduced to me via the the famous Derek Towner, yeah, who nobody else would know. Yeah. He was at Langs, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, after you did T5. You hopped over and you've done several major projects, haven't you? I, yeah. I think since then. Uh, and now you're steering towards uh, a sunlit sunset of retirement, aren't you? <laughs> and you're going to pass and you're going to pass the church, pass the torch on yeah, to whoever's plan. coming beyond with, with this one today. And Mo, uh, I've known for all oh, about three years now, I think, and. Um, We've had some interesting, delightful conversations. I'm glad to have snaffled him to, to come along and, and uh, complement the discussion today. So without further ado, Jonathan, the stage is over to you. Okay, okay. thanks very much, Steve. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Lovely to be talking to you. Um, the, the, to put some context into this, um, Steve, in his usual style, and I've known him for 20 years, so you probably all know what he's like, rang me up and said, I need some help with the presentation. Can you talk about this? And um, he, he set this um, question, which I actually I think came from Mo originally. So congrats to Mo. But um, I, I basically saying let, he, he wanted to open up a, a discussion, really. This isn't me saying this is where I think Project Controls needs to go to in the future, anything like that. But he set the challenge and it really did. When he read it out to me, it rang a few bells in my mind. And um, in preparing for this, it's made me reflect actually on the 20 odd years, more probably 30 years that I've been involved in delivery of projects through integrated project controls. Um, and, and I think it's, it's I, I see it sort of like an exam question. So um, uh, the, the um, it, it's a sort of here's a statement, discuss and write your 500 words. So so what I've done is just put some thoughts to this and, and I'm going to dwell on my experiences and, and, and um, you know, a few events that have happened and my thoughts to kick off this as a conversation. Mo's then going to join in afterwards, um, give his thoughts. And what we really want to do is, is generate a debate and some thinking. Uh, with the possibility of maybe revisiting this later when we've had a chance, if we agree, when we've had a chance to, to think about this and say, where do we want to take things to? So the, the exam question is, you know, organisations these days perceive project controls as an overhead. It doesn't add value um, due to wrong organisation, organisational culture, a weak demo demonstration of value and benefits. And com that's combined with overcomplicated methodologies and systems. That's the exam question. So if I go back a little bit to put into context, a little bit about me, I mean, Steve's filled you in reasonably well, but basically um, I originally trained as a QS. I'm still a chartered QS, although I haven't really done QSing for a long time. Um, and I moved into project management first and then project controls in the 90s. And in those days, project management, certainly in construction, was a new concept. Up until that point, architects had done the project management. And I used to say then, and I'll come back to this later, if you ask 10 people to define what project management was, you'd normally get 11 different answers. It was so new. And in the early days, we gave it away as a free service with the Quantity Surveying Commission. Um, these days, the project manager is the first person um, the client will go for. In, in starting up my project management journey, um, I was introduced to project controls very early on by a couple of guys who'd come out of Exxon Petroleum to work for the company I was working for. And I thought it was great. Um, I was then lucky enough to work on a project using integrated project, project controls run by some ex-Exxon people. It was for Glaxo in Stevenage. And to this day, I hold it as um, the most successful project I've ever worked on. It really met all its objectives. It was also, in, a, in an ironic way, 
the simplest project, the the the, the least firefighting project I've ever worked on. Uh, and at that point, I was convinced that project controls was the way forward. And certainly on reflection, looking back over the years, my most successful projects, maybe by coincidence, have been the ones that we run along the process of integrated controls. So when I joined Terminal 5 to set up controls on that, um, I joined also, found out about Steve um, and um, joined the EVA SIG in 2000 and, and been you know, working with the APM, with the EVA SIG on and off, uh, working on Steve's conferences on and off um, for the last 20 years, believe it or not. Uh, and in that time, I've, I've, I've worked on the delivery of various projects um, using integrated controls and had varying experiences and varying levels of success. So that's the background that I'm sort of basing this um, presentation on. Um, when I joined the SIG, we had this great idea of um, getting the standard, you know, getting more people introduced to project controls because not many people in my part of the industry had used it. Um, and we thought we could take it on uh, and get it more adopted as a standard. And my question there is, has anything changed? Well, it has, because more people are doing it. But as I reflect back, I think as a consequence of that, we've set ourselves some new challenges. Th these are the main sort of five segments, five challenges that, that I want to address. Um, first of all, clients often perceive it to be expensive. I find there can be a lack of leadership vision and lacking the right culture and attitudes to deliver integrated controls. Um, my mentor and old boss always used to say this is not rocket science and it is a very practical, pragmatic approach. But I fear we've turned it into a rocket science. Um, we do not have a standard way of working. And there is a big question, and this is where you prove the value. Is it really any different? So I'll talk about each one of those in turn. First of all, um, it can be perceived to be expensive. Um, traditionally, in certainly in construction, you, you, you'd have a series of consultants that are employed by the client. You'd have a QS doing the cost and the on the contractual work. You'd have a planner normally working for the contractor. Um, QSs weren't very good at planning. Um, you'd have people doing risk, all, all as separate resources, and that would come to a certain bill. But they worked in isolation and very often those costs weren't seen directly by the client. For instance, the resources that were supplied by the contractors were lost inside the overheads of the contractors. When you approach integrated controls on a program, you have to set it up properly. You have to have the right systems. You have to have the right people doing it. And the client sees those costs more directly. So very often to the client, it looks like it's more expensive even if it isn't. What we don't do very well, though, is prove what we've saved as a consequence of delivering integrated controls, because it's really difficult to do. Identifying the benefit is quite hard. You don't deliver the same project in two ways and say this way was better. It just doesn't work like that. And I think we've been very poor at demonstrating to the client that they're actually reducing their risk. And, and, and put those together and then look at the way we deliver controls at the moment, where we've made it far more complex you are adding a degree of extra cost. My view has always been, if you're adding say half a percent to your overhead, to your cost of fees of a project, it's well worth it because of the risk reduction you introduce to the client. And I find it quite ironic that clients are the first to, to complain in the industry that we don't deliver projects on time to budget and things like that. But very often they're not willing to go for the new way of working. Um, I think also what's happened more so in recent years is, and I've had this played back to me many times by, by senior management and clients, project controls is now perceived to be an administrative action, activity. It's people going out there, either running a process, controlling a, a, a change order procedure, for instance, going and gathering a bit of data, writing a report, and then going to the client, this is the report, this is where your project's at without adding the value. And what I've actually seen firsthand, and I won't name names, is I've gone into some organisations where the project controls people have actually been administrators and they've been given the title. If I go back to where I first started, I remember being trained by these Exxon guys. I never worked for Exxon, 
but they, they gave me the introduction to project controls. And the stories they would tell me is if, if you wanted to be a project manager at Exxon, you spent two to three years working in project controls first in the department, learning how to build a project, learning how to plan, how to manage costs, how to set budgets, how to do risk, yeah, how to forecast, all those different things. Then you became a project manager. And in, in their world, the project controls person did the lot. In fact, on smaller projects, the project manager did the lot. What I see now is people have hidden inside some of these complex systems and do not have those skill sets to add the extra value that you really should be adding as a project controls person. Now, that's a bit of a generalization, but I think it's one of the factors. And I've been challenged several times in the last few years that all project controls is, is, is a bunch of administrators. Why do we need them? It's a bureaucracy. Why waste money? So that's the first point. The next one I've put around leadership and vision and culture. And what I mean by this is, first of all, and I almost describe it as two churches, the old way of doing it and the project integrated controls way of doing it. Project controls requires transparency. The way you work with project controls is to identify what's going wrong really early. I, I, I describe it as the embers of the fire that you can stamp out rather than waiting for the forest fire to be raging and you can't put it out anymore. Now, that requires project managers to hold their hands up and say, I've got a problem, boss. And that's where the cultural bit comes in, because in some organisations, if you tell your boss you've got a problem, you get shot. And I think a lot of people and, and yeah, I'd include me in this. When you're in these situations, you, you really want to sort your problems out for yourself first. So it's, it's almost counterintuitive to have this transparency. The organisations who do it well and support that sort of reporting can crack project controls. Many people and I have come across individuals who frankly do not want to tell the real picture because if they do, it shows them up or they feel it shows them up. That's a cultural thing that we need to address. The other aspect of this is to run an integrated control solution through the life of a project requires a hell of a lot of discipline. You've got to follow your procedures. You've got to keep all your data up to date. You've got to keep your systems up to date. You've got to do things the way you want to do it. And I think people often underestimate the, the discipline you need, particularly in setting up the program. In order to do this properly, I think particularly as we're dealing a lot of times with clients who haven't experienced it firsthand. And because it takes so long to set things up in the early days, it also requires a degree of belief. You want to do it this way. I've actually described it as a church. I don't mean a church as in a religious church, but a church as a way of, of, of living, a way of doing things. Um, you can have projects where you get the two churches working together and that's a disaster. But if you don't have the belief in the buy in of the people at the top. Then um, you'll never make it work. They won't have the patience to wait for everything to be set up properly, for instance. And the old adage of projects don't plan to fail, they fail to plan is true even to this day. And it's not that long ago when I was asked by a chief executive to stop doing the planning and start doing the delivery. I first heard that term when I was a young QS, and it's still true today. Once you've got the go ahead for the project, everyone wants to see the holes being dug in the ground. They want to see the work being delivered. They don't take the time to set it up properly and controls need you to set it up properly. And it amazes me that we still have to talk about that some 30 odd years later, but that's where we're at. The next point is, and I go back to my first project. When I first worked in it, I was a QS. I'd done a little bit of project management. I knew absolutely nothing about integrated project controls other than used to get a few graphs. And that's basically what I told the client at the time he employed me. Um, we ran that project, introducing this new concept to the, the section of the UK construction industry. And interestingly, Steve mentioned one of those people, Derek Towner. He worked for Langs at the time on the project. Um, and we wrote six procedures. And with those six procedures, we delivered the project to time, to cost and above quality. Um, and everyone was able to work with those. And what I think those procedures did was gave us the essence of what we wanted to achieve. We wanted to earn value analysis, which we did. Um, we wanted to use project controls the way Exxon used it. 
And by reading those procedures, you understood what was required and you used your own professional judgment and experience to get there. So we're allowed a lot of room to, to make our own decisions. Yeah, you'd get a few wrong, but you'd soon correct them because you could see where they were going wrong. I roll that forward. One of my more recent um, companies I went into work for had 110 project controls procedures and each one of those procedures was audited. So you had to understand them. And I'll defy anyone to understand that to a point where an auditor can pour all over it and um, and ask you questions. And I think, and I can't decide quite why it's happened, whether it's the fear of audit, whether it's the fact that we've over-engineered things, whether it's the need to have something written down whenever you come across a problem to resolve. But I think we've made our procedures and processes far too complex. We talk too much in scientific terms about how you do these things rather than getting on and doing it. Supporting that, oh, we're now using a lot more big systems, a lot more data. And again, I was working in an organisation a few years ago where they had so much data and so many reports, they really couldn't see the wood for the trees and they were ignoring the obvious. So I think my old mentor always used to take a pragmatic approach. He used to follow the 80-20 rule. I think somehow we've lost that. And I, I fear that we have a fear of not being able to use our professional judgment anymore, because if you do, you don't get away with it and you get an order to breathe down your neck. I'd really like to throw that out as something to discuss later on. And that brings me on to what I call standards. And, and what I mean by standards is I don't think we've managed to properly define what project controls is as a single definition. We've got lots of different people having a go at it. Go at it. The APM have had a bit of a go at it. You've got the PMI. You've got all the big clients all doing their own definitions. But when you go around them all, you get different terminology, you get different approaches, you get different emphasis. Um, and I haven't seen a single way of, of, of delivering project trolls. I mean, what is the right way? I don't know. My model is the Exxon model. I happen to think that's the right way, but I'm not the only person here. Um, because we've got many different definitions, we've got lots of different ways of doing it, and we've got confusion. You then add another layer to it, which is this new role called the PMO, um, which is a relatively recent term. And that, to me, sits in the same place as project management sat 30 years ago. Ask someone what a PMO does and you'll get 11 different answers. And I've certainly seen CVs come through for people who say they're PMO. And some of them are people who've worked inside a bank and written a report all the way through to people who pretty much project manage the whole job. That's, that's overlapping with project controls and it's creating more confusion. So the next question I'd like to ask and hang there is, what is project controls? Really, if you look, if you break it down into its core elements, it's using the disciplines that already exist pretty much in our industries. Um, I've always looked at it as a profession. I used to say, and I used to say this to Steve, it's a second profession. You get into it through engineering, through quantity surveying, through architecture, whatever, and then you adopt it as a profession. I now question that. Is it a profession or is it just a methodology that requires a particular approach and a particular culture? So how different is it? I think the big difference is what we try to do here is integrate the disciplines that historically were kept isolated. And, and the example I use there is my own example. As a quantity surveyor, when I did my very first cash flow for a project, I didn't even get the schedule out. I used a standard equation to do an S curve. And looking back on that, you know, how on earth can you do a cash flow when you don't look at the flow of work? And and that to me is the difference. Let's integrate the professions and have one person capable of doing all those things and capable of analysing the reports and adding value to that analysis to help the project develop. I think added to that, we've now moved on and the world has moved on. I remember when I first got involved with this, we had very few elements of modern technology. We didn't use computers much. Um, just looking at how we go about our daily lives, running a meeting like this over the web was impossible in 2000. Um, and we've now got new thinkers coming to the market. 
um, and some of them are game changers. There's a company I do a little bit of work for, Nodes and Links, who are very impressive. They're looking at different ways of looking at risk inside the schedule, bringing things together. I think the danger there, though, is that we've gone on with these new ideas. EVA was a new idea to me 30 years ago, and we forget the old. I, I think if, if we as a project controls community just try and keep doing it the way we did it, we're very soon going to be left on the vine to, to wither. But if you let the new thinkers say this is the new world, you're going to have emperor's new clothes. I think the real challenge is for us to say, what is the core of project controls? How do we then combine with the new thinking and, and deliver a, a good new value added way of you know, serving those that project delivery? Um, and use our knowledge and experience to help the new world of technology, the new world of AI. Just in closing on that, I was asked a couple of years ago by a young controls person, and we were having a conversation about computers and AI, and he said to me with a bit of a glint in his eye, well, surely you don't have a job anymore because AI is going to do everything you need to do in project controls. And I said, that's a really good challenge. I said, what AI is going to do is all of the grunt work gathering the data, analyzing things, you know, working with schedules and stuff. What you'll need people for is the experience. And that's what we can add. You know, you look at a report and you go, this is where we need to take action on this project. We can still do that. We just got to embrace all the new thinking that's going on. So that was my positioning a discussion. Um, I'll hand over to Mo. Uh, Mo, I don't know if you want to take control or if you want me to press the button when you want to move a slide on, just shout. Um, but Mo's going to sort of put his own view on this. And then what we'd like to do is try and open up a bit of a debate. So, Mo, over to you. Thanks, John. Thanks. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll probably share my screen. Do I need to unshare? No, that's right. That's right. Could do it. Can you guys see this? Yeah, I've got it. Excellent. So yeah, thanks, Jonathan. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'll pick up from, let's say from, I'll give a different perspective uh, or a slightly similar perspective to what Jonathan have spoken about. Um, probably give you a bit of insight of where I'm coming from and where my insight is about. Um, so I started more of my career as a civil engineer, but very quickly I discovered more of my ambition and enjoy and interest in project management and project control. So I've been doing it for the last roughly 20 years. Um, I've been lucky I've done it, let's say, across contractors, engineering consultancy, clients. Uh, and now let's say I've, uh, let's say, uh, putting all of this together in a consultancy and advising clients on how to improve, let's say, project controls, build it from scratch or firefighting or troubleshooting something that is currently not working within an organization. So so I, I've tried to more of in this discussion, I've tried to bring all of these perspectives, all of these, let's say, uh, let's say perspectives and, and, and views that people have shared with me and more of a experience on to what I have seen in lots of various sectors, various contractors, various clients, various uh, industries. And what do they have in common and what, let's say, issues and challenges they are facing and how is that creating this project controls paradox that that I feel needs to be really addressed? So, so I thought I'll, I'll talk today with more of start with a discussion with more of a a view or a context of where we are today and and the world around us because I think that's that has created uh, the recent recent couple of years and events have created a bit of a pressure on the project controls community and I've captured some of these uh, external factors or context that we are dealing with. So I think. I think the coronavirus and the pandemic has created more of a uh, an eye opener for organizations to think about efficiency. I think efficiency is now uh, a topic on every organization, let's say agenda. Um, cross rail and big infrastructure projects. I think unfortunately we've been living in a in an era of the last 10 years, lots of major projects haven't been successful or hasn't had a great deal of success. So uh, a lot of that scrutiny is more of starting to come about as more of why all of these major projects are not being uh, successful and why they're not delivering to time and budget. Uh, I think there is a movement, let's say, as, as you can see in the in the in the diagram, the project speed. Again, another factor of the government is really pushing really hard for half the price, half the time and, and really try to get the whole industry and the whole sector to really think differently, because that's the only way we're going to do it. Um, it's not more of a bit of 
uh, improvement here or tweaking here and there. Um, if we want to achieve something like project speed or some of the aspirations of project speed, we have to think differently. Um, and I think there is a, another factor as well is lots of organizations are now reassessing lots of the current rules that they were deemed like necessary, uh, let's say as a keen or, a, or, a, or some of the necessary rules like project management to project controls. What are, what are these people are now we're getting, I'm getting a lot of, let's say a lot of um, questions about what is a project manager? Is there really needed? What value can they add? Uh, can they take a different shape and form? And can we utilize them in a different ways? So I think there is lots of, I think lots of people are going back to the drawing board because of the pressures, uh, whether they are economical pressures, whether they're pressures from the government, but in general, everybody's now into the drawing board of the, the current way of working, the status quo just can't continue. It has to change somehow. Um, I think that's one side more of the context. The other side I wanted to bring as well is more of, I think I've been noticing, let's say within my bubble and within more of the people I know, is there is a lot of scrutiny on project controls and that is increasing day by day, week by week, month by month. A lot of scrutiny, um, especially every organization that I go uh, and let's say and work and support or advice. Um, and I've been lucky in the last couple of years, I've been working across multiple, whether it's water or in or aviation or or lots of different sectors, more of public and private, and, and seems to be more of, uh, let's say, most of them are coming out with lots of, lots of, let's say, uh, scratching their head as what is the value of project controls? What is it bringing? And a lot of scrutiny. And I've tried to share some, I've tried to capture some of these quotes that I have been told face to face, uh, and let's say working with the organizations to address them. So some of the things I've heard from people in the last couple of years was, uh, like what will happen if we let the project controls and the PMO, if, what, if, what if they don't show up tomorrow to work? And more of CEOs and, and, and boards were like nothing, will operate business as usual, which was very concerning as more of like the value is not very clear to them. Uh, and that's what I'll probably try to cover here as more of what, 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 is, what is that perception is, let's say, to some of that, uh, that the organizations have been working with. Um, another another example of let's say one of the things I've, I've been told is yeah we've got an army of people let's say they they feed a system that we call the beast uh, which produces lots of data which is probably most most of it is wrong and and has lots of jargons that we don't understand uh, and it's not adding any value whatsoever and I think this is touching on the complexity of some of the organizations and the project controls that they create and the jargons that they produce uh, and what insight is that giving. Uh, Another, some of the other examples I've been to a CEO uh, and a board were saying, if if there is a, a progress report that has a red drag status, I don't want to see it. And it's more of just don't bring it to me, which is again touches on a very critical issue, which is more of the uh, the culture. If if a, if a board or, a, or a organization or a CEO is she or he are treating the organization as I don't want to hear bad news. I think this is, doesn't create the culture for transparency. And we've seen it so many times. and. And I think we've been just advising, just like uh, trying to fix project controls, we've been trying to fix as well the mindset of, of, of the boards and the exec into, well, you, you can't have this culture because it's just not going to be helpful. Which, um, And I think the second one, another one is more of, uh, I've seen lots of meetings and lots of, uh, let's say, uh, boards where such examples have been mentioned, like a CPI of this and SPI of that. Uh, but then when we ask, when when they are, the project controls are asked the question, what does that actually mean? to the business. Uh, there was more of a silence in the room. So I think I think it's I think project controls or in this instance I'm trying to highlight the value of what we're doing project control. It's not about producing these figures or highlighting what the project is over budget or, or behind schedule. It's about the insight that this has uh, and what that, that can bring to the to the balance sheet, which I think is a critical point that project controls have missed the trick along the way, which is what does that actually means in real life in a balance sheet? in the in the revenue and the more of the the things that really more of let's say that the senior exec or, or the business is really concerned about and thinking about uh, i think the the one the bottom left corner that was an interesting one and a quite a recent one uh evm is just theory we've tried it uh, for the last 10 years and it just doesn't work uh, funny story i think this one was said to a tool was said to me in a client uh on day one of helping them do evm uh and after six months or I think eight months, we've managed to get them to be the three finalists of uh, of APM last year awards. Uh, so it's quite interesting to more of take an organization through, uh, let's say through the journey of implementing EVM and, and getting them to a very good shape. But I think as you can see, there is lots of 
misconceptions and lots of perceptions already in people's mind that this doesn't work and 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 uh, this more of is only theory and this is a complete waste of time. We're getting a lot of that, especially EVM. Every single organization, every, everybody's been saying, or lots of people have been saying this message is just theory, it just doesn't work. And I'll explain later on what, why I think the reasons behind that. Uh, let's say another example is more of, uh, let's say, a project in London. It had all the bells and the whistles of project controls, yet it was deemed uh, a disaster or a failure, or it hasn't succeeded as it intended to be. And I think as a community, we are inheriting some of these issues. I think it's becoming more of label it, like label this issue or label that disaster or label that uh, pro problematic pro project as more of project controls was not done properly or could have been done better. And I think lastly, I think we've all probably have heard this. And I think we yesterday when we were speaking to Steve um, about more of, yeah, some some of the people that we're speaking to are more of like I'm an experienced project manager. And Jonathan mentioned that earlier. Uh, I've just done a Prince too, so therefore I'm a project manager, uh, which I think is created that uh, perception to people that project controls is just an uh, admin. Uh, because that's the service most of the projects are getting, and that's more of the inside projects are getting. So this is some of the, I would say, some of the messages that I think I've summarized is why I think, let's say, the perception of project controls, uh, let's say, seen as quite negative and not adding any value or seen as overhead that really needs to, uh, to change and reinvent itself. Um, I think I'll move into some of the, I think, let's say, I think I'll share some of the common reasons why I think these issues are coming up and, and what are the challenges or the root causes of the challenges that to the project controls community. And I think I tried to capture it here as uh, from the three perspectives of tool set, mindset and a skill set and, and what are these actually uh, components could include. So I'll start with, with mindset and I'll touch on some of them, not all of them, just cautious of time to get questions open for the, let's say for, for everyone and get uh, the, beat, the beat going. But um, I think one of one of the things I've, I've noticed as uh, let's say, and I've mentioned earlier about the weak insight. I think, I think we're noticing regularly, there is not a clear insight between a project, the benefits and, and the balance sheet. More of a CPI of 1.2, 1.3. For lots of people, this might be very useful insight, but I think sometimes we, we miss the the trick of what does that mean in EBITDA or what does it mean in the balance sheet and how does this affect? The other one I've mentioned as well, variance is seen as negative. I think this is becoming a very regular uh, insight that I'm getting in every organization currently I'm, I'm seeing, uh, becoming more of a, something that we put a lot of effort into trying to address because it's, it's one of the critical things to more of get people to accept the message of, of, of project controls and the insight and the value project controls could offer to organizations. Uh, not fit for purpose operating models. I think I've seen, we've seen lots of issues where, let's say, uh, wrong tools are being used, the wrong operating models are being used. Sometimes where, let's say, uh, it needs a controlling model and sometimes they use a, let's say, a more hybrid model or a more of a directive model. Sometimes the, the organization don't get the model right. The, the, the approach and the mindset is very outdated and the operating model don't, doesn't uh, fit the types of projects being delivered. Uh, and therefore, this is another thing that I think needs to be addressed. Confusion over uh, TV, let's say news and Scotland Yard. And I think we've seen this various times. I think sometimes project controls, community and organizations feel that they are here to more of have a stick and beat the project managers with. And they're playing the Scotland Yard kind of a role. They're detect trying to make be detectives uh, and trying to make them look bad to the board or, or make them look bad in general or highlight their mistakes. And I think sometimes, and definitely it is needed, uh, but I think there is a differentiation between I'm providing a project controls that is providing a service to a project, or it's a Scotland Yard trying to analyze and detect issues and highlight them and get people and raise the flags when it's needed. But I think the confusion of which role needs to be happening when is causing people to basically distance from project controls uh, and let's say, and not, uh, and not be on board. Uh, lastly, on mindset, I would suggest, uh, Projects are, let's say, from let's say from Mars. Let's say businesses are from Venus. But I think that I think we haven't, as a community, haven't figured out a common ground where the two can come together and the two can basically work together in a in a common environment where the let's say the the project community appreciates what the business drivers are and vice versa. The business understand how a project is being delivered. What is the consequences of saying, yeah, I want this project, uh, let's say, as uh, let's say 50% cheaper? What does actually that mean? Is that actually feasible and doable, uh, let's say, and, and can be done. 
So I think the two worlds are currently or needs to be, in some cases I've seen, they're not working on the same platform or in the same, let's say, dimension, let's say. Um, the other part I'll touch on is, is tools. And I think uh, uh, Jonathan have mentioned a few of those uh, as well and touched on a few of them, which is uh, procracy and labor intensive systems. It seems like for somehow we lost during the, let's say, the years we've lost the, the let's say, the view of what are the tools are here for. Uh, and we started more of feeding the beast and creating very complicated systems. And it feels like sometimes I go to organizations and I feel like they're they're very proud of creating a very complicated system that only few understands and few have got their head around, which is totally opposite. If if the whole organizations or these systems and processes are not used by everyone and everyone understands them, then you're more of not creating value. Uh, that's more of the success criteria of a process. How how liked and adopted, let's say, it is on the ground and how people are, let's say, are using it and implementing it. Uh, and if people are distancing themselves from it, then it's not adding any value and it needs to be revised. Um, another factor I've seen as well is wrong tools for the wrong environment. Uh, let's say sometimes, let's say, the, you need all the bells and the whistles for a project that is quite simple and quite straightforward, uh, where it doesn't need to be, so, uh, and vice versa as well. So another factor that sometimes the wrong tools are being used for the wrong environment, and not all the bells and the whistles are always the right idea. Uh, the next one I think is quite revolutionary, I think in my view, as well in the overwhelming data and not information. I think it's becoming very apparent we're producing a whole number of data. I think everybody is very excited about, let's say, Power BI and how many reports they have and how many KPIs they produce and how many dashboards they produce. But I think we've lost the trick somehow in the during the journey that it's not about the data, it's about the information. And it's that that big data era, I think, in my view, is 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 over. And I think we've missed the trick. It's not about the amount of the data. It's now it's about information. What is it actually trying to tell me? How can I use this information? But uh, and I think that's a very something that I'm very passionate about because I think that's where the trick is. Um, um, the other part is the, as well as point of intersection between agile and waterfall. Um, I think water. Lots of organizations are trying to adopt the agile mindset and the agile more of, let's say, ways of working. But I think that balance between agile and waterfall is still something to be thought about and something to be, um, let's say, finding the right intersections of how do we take the best of both worlds and come up with more of a, a, a hybrid that could work. Uh, lastly, on the tool set, I would say digitization of experience. I think we've got lots of tools that does the, the theory but it's more of the experience. We haven't really managed to find a tool or systems that digitize experience, that digitize the know-how, uh, which might help us save a lot of effort and saves a lot of time and saves a lot of insight. Uh, and I think something that can be quite revolutionary for the industry if we start thinking about how can we do that. Lastly, on skill sets, I would say, um, from a perception of loss of organizations, I think project controls as a community or in organizations, it's becoming large teams with lo lots of special resources and people see that that's quite expensive. Um, and I think we see project controls teams and organizations are getting larger and larger and larger with no demonstration of what benefits is that going to bring. Uh, uh, Jonathan touched on that point as well, which is the single discipline workforce. I think we're seeing planners, risk managers, project controls, reporting, we were, and I think that's more of the old ways, the old school of working. And I think we're now gonna, we need to move into a multidisciplinary workforce, people who can do planning and scheduling and controls and risk and, and commercials. Um, and that will have significant savings or organization and also simplify project controls and the value. Um, theoretical knowledge and, and training, I think what we're seeing is lots of people know the theory, i.e. they know what's an SPI and a CPI and a and an and own value and how, how to put an estimates and how to put a budget. But let's say as Mike Tyson, let's say had a nice quote, everybody has a plan until they get the first punch, i.e. Um, in this context, uh, let's say everybody knows the theory, but when you put it on practice, that's where the difficulty comes in. And that's what lots of organizations are struggling with. How do I implement all of this theory practice and what is the different uh, scenarios that I need to adopt, uh, 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 let's say, implement, uh, let's say, different scenarios to all of that. Uh, I think there's plenty of standards out there. I don't think we need more standards. I think it, we need more understanding of the application. We need more frameworks of how do we implement those standards. 
Uh, I don't think there is, I think in my view, there's plenty of standards on how the science could be, but as Jonathan said, it's more of focused on project controls frameworks and the application of how to do that, uh, I think is what is really needed. And that's what really the community is missing. How do I do something? The know-how is what I feel in, in summary is what is really needed. Lastly, project language versus business language. I think the project controls as a skill set and the people need to start having, let's say, a broader perspective in what the balance sheet is. How do I read it? What is really matters from an SPI or an, a CPI is more of if a project is behind schedule and over budget, what does that mean to the organization? What does that mean to the revenue? What does that mean to the business as a whole? I think that's an insight that that the skill sets and the people need to start developing that that uh, that skill. Um, lastly, I would share more of, let's say, I think in, in summary, I don't think we have a choice. Uh, I think the project controls profession needs to reinvent itself um, or suffer definitely the consequences. Um, I think I've tried to, to capture this in this diagram. I think project control started in a good piece uh, and a good place. And I think over time we somehow lost, uh, let's say, the direction. And I think over time that efficiency is, is diminishing. Um, project organization, project objectives, as I said in the beginning, um, the context and the environment we are operating in really requires uh, and really putting the agenda of every organization for efficiency, value, do everything, half the price, half the time. Um, so I think I think today we are intersecting. I think that's why I'm thinking we are today we are in a junction. We need to reinvent uh, project controls, and I'm more of I think it's more of the the, the project controls 2.2. I think it's needed. It's more needed now than any that, than ever before. Uh, we have to really press the reset button. Otherwise, um, it's just not gonna. It's gonna. It's gonna basically take a direction that might not be valuable for organizations and the scrutiny is going to increase the value of what project controls uh, might not really, let's say, might not really come across. So I think we are in a junction. We need to try to do a U-turn uh, and think about this from a different angle and a different perspective, but do something about it very quickly. So okay, I'll thanks, 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 Mo. thanks, Mo. Um, um, I, I think, I think just, just in summary, sorry, we obviously see some presentations there. there. Uh, who's got their mic open? No. Um, you see two presentations there. Uh, sort of a, a agreeing other bits, giving you two different perspectives. What we really want to do is ha have a discussion. We don't necessarily say you have to agree with these views. Um, it's more setting out a challenge saying, look, like to Mo's last slide, looking forwards, we just can't carry on doing the same thing. That's our view. So I'd like to open this up really um for feedback for debate for discussion um and i think alistair i know we've been having a chat about this in the past is there anything you would like to say to kick it all off yeah thanks jonathan and thanks mo um as you know jonathan we both violently agreed when i saw your initial views on your presentation um i think as you say history we're both sort of in the same camp we both fell out project management into controls and uh, found we quite enjoyed it i think the the biggest challenge is that perception um of the value add um we are an overhead cost we have to accept that but i think it's absolutely crucial um that we we absolutely define the value and I, i've sort of reflect back on the presentation that i did and i noticed that there's a number of synergies in my mind, but I think it's back to that professionalism and that um, what I call insight, but it's about actually providing that extra value and that info, um, added context of around that information flow that people do it. I also liked your, your piece around the, the big systems. Um, and I think we've all gone there, especially in within network rail we are there we've got a multitude of big systems lots and lots of data and i think what that does is drives a culture of oh we can do we do we get more reports and more complex reports that actually nobody actually understands in the management and um, they look really fancy look really great but actually they don't actually get the message across because they become too complex and i think back to where i started it was really simple i think we had about four reports um that were laid out on a page and some of them were even hand-drawn because uh 
we didn't have electronic systems then and PowerPoint didn't really exist then. They were onto the old acetate slides that you put on a, an overhead projector. Um, but uh, something that resonates in my mind was something that an old director said to me ages, even th in the early days was, it's paralysis by analysis. Um, you can do too much analysis and actually you paralyze yourselves from, from doing things. And that always resonates in my mind about when we start getting complex, we actually actually slow ourselves down and don't, uh, don't add that value. And I do like the, the thought around, and I think it, it'd be a really good debate in my mind, is where we, we have this culture now of real extreme specialists rather than what I would call generalists with specialist knowledge in certain areas. Um, we seem to have to deploy a number of specialists now. Maybe that's due to complexity of the systems and technology. I don't know. Um, but I think I do agree with Mo in some respects. I think a U-turn may be a bit extreme, but I do think we need to find a new direction and define that direction for the modern world. So that's my thoughts. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Alistair. Um, Alan, I think you put your hand up first. Have you got something you'd like to say? Yeah, just... Bear with me. I think I'm, I'm, I'm muted now. I, I, I just I mean, there's a lot of really good issues in there. And, and, and I do agree with the point that that, you know, you, you get onto different projects and, and, and different thoughts and different solutions. But I, a couple of things from me, really. One is, do you think it would actually help with with project delivery if if more project managers and project controllers had more domain knowledge? in the projects that they're controlling rather than having a lot of qualifications and and and, and theory and and, and I, I i i have some experience in my own career there but I, but i think that's a, a a point which is worth thinking about and, and and i think the other the other issue for me is i mean I, i'm a great believer in putting effort into create in the right environment to deliver a project and when we're investing money, I think we should be thinking more about balancing that effort so that we create the environment to ensure that the people that are actually delivering the project do it well, as opposed to creating the organisation which is checking on whether the people who are delivering the project are actually delivering the project well. And there's a subtle difference between those 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 two things. I couldn't agree more on that latter point. Um, I, I think, yeah, culture should sit at the middle of it all and the environment we have should sit at the middle of it all. Thank you for that. Um, Gordon, I think you were the next to raise your hand. Uh, yes, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm Gordon Kranz. I'm uh, from the U.S. here, uh, actually president of the College of Performance Management and, you know, done DOD work for quite quite some time. System engineer by trade, but uh, earn value is um, is kind of my my recent profession. Uh, just a couple of thoughts. I mean, we're going through the same stuff. You know, hey, uh, project controls, people don't seem to see the value. Um, what I'm seeing is uh, for the most part is, is project controls um, sometimes can get focused on just trying to understand cost and schedule and, and bear with me for a second without really understanding the technical value that gets delivered. Um, for example, um, as a program is going through uh, its maturation, there are technical performance measures that get tracked, size, power, weight, uh, resolution, you know, those sorts of things that system engineers naturally track over time. And they have, you know, envelopes of, uh, of acceptance depending on where they're at in and you know, generally, they tell you the the health of the program. Well, th those technical parameters um, should generally be telling you the same thing that your costs and schedule uh, metrics are saying. You're either on track or you're not. Um, and when they're not generally telling you the the, the similar information, there's a disconnect, right? Uh, there there's a disconnect between what the true technical performance is of the project and and what the actual performance being projected in the project controls costs and schedules and um, so that to me is, is what we're trying to focus on on CPM is is saying that project controls is much more than cost schedule it's it's these TPMs it's quality metrics it's 
it's any metric that any discipline within the program is trying to track uh, progress and they all need to be integrated and understood together. Um, and it, it's a change of it, it's it's definitely a change in the way uh, we do business. Um, so I, I think your thoughts are certainly on track and consistent with what we're thinking and um, I got some great ideas there. OK, thanks very much, Gordon. Um, Mr. Wake, I think. Yes, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I need to set expectations here, ladies and gentlemen, because I am acutely aware of the time. Um, I'm not going to let this run and run. Uh, I, I think as Mo, Jonathan and I kind of figured this, this, this is something that we could be here for weeks discussing. And uh, I'm going to aim to bring this to a close and I'm not going to force you to come up with solutions today. But I would like to, uh, so further term, back end of January maybe, I think we should have a continuation session of this as we move. Currently, we're moving into the dark. It's the Christmas solstice approaching. As we move out of that into the light, then maybe we should start to talk about the more practical uh, ways of addressing these issues. In the interim, I would like to hear you uh, I'd like to get your reaction, really, to what Jonathan Mo have said. Do, do you agree with this? You know, do you think it is the end of days? Um, are we doomed if we don't reinvent ourselves? Ha you know, uh, one thing I note uh, painfully: um, I don't suppose there's anybody under the age of thirty here, apart from Stephen Carver, obviously. But um, it's it, it, it's 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 something that uh, um, uh, I see all the time. You know, where are the next generations? Where where are we moving into? So. Um, I'll just take a step back. I saw Stephen was here and uh, had his hand up. Um, Stephen, you, you, you're very welcome to take uh, uh, to make a comment and a contribution now um, on the understanding that you can come back and maybe host the uh, um, the coming out into the sunlight um, session. In <laughs> well, I'd just like to throw in brilliant presentations. Thank you very much indeed. I'd just like to ask the, the question that, you know, it, it's the thing in the room, as they say. In London, we had a brilliant project. I still think it's a brilliant project called Crossrail, which for years I was told was not just green, was green green. And it had buildings full of project controls people. And yet overnight, literally within 24 hours, it went from green green to triple red to complete disaster. What went wrong? How did our profession miss something as fundamental as that? If, if Walter Mashard were here, he'd be able to tell us. <laughs> uh, it, it is a very good question. Uh, 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 and again, I, 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 I think therein lies some politics and dragons um, somehow. Um, I, I, I can't believe that the profession didn't have the data and didn't have uh, the data at its fingertips. I might Which be wrong. Back to the point that's been made, in the end, it's all down to culture. And yeah. project controls people are completely wasting their times if if the culture is just going to you know ignore the advice. Yeah, I I, I do I agree. Do agree. Yeah. Um, so so listen. Um, well, nice to see you, Steve. Um, uh, it's uh, nice um, to see you all. Uh, and, and it must be really strange not being the speaker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. I'm thoroughly yeah. enjoying this. Yeah. Well, listen. I I am afraid. I am going. I am going to cut it down but with, with, with the promise and the undertaking that we will resume this hopefully sometime towards the back end of January uh, m m maybe I'll allocate at least an hour for that one um, because I, I've got the feeling that this this needs to be talked out and talked through without with, with, without rumbling on interminably but I think that there are solutions and that there are ways of approaching that we are trying to do and I would say from my own perception and, and outlook, we, we are endeavouring to to reinvent the, the, the controls community and the business exercise. We are attempting to broaden the amplitude of, of what controls mean so that we're not just uh, monitoring control and the delivery of scope. We are, you know, I, I want the community to broaden out and be more, of, more part of the game when the business idea is created and followed through and when the benefits are, are defined. And I want them to be the community that controls and tracks that you know, through to creating the potential for those benefits to actually be used, but way beyond that. So for 20 or 30 years after they've actually been delivered into the community that wanted to use them. So I, I, I'm going to stop it now. Um, 
with that undertaking, it would be great, Steve, if you came along and hosted that. I think it could be quite a quite a, quite quite an exciting, entertaining thing if you're around in January, if we if we live through Christmas. Uh, and 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 so uh, to draw a line at the moment, if I could invite Paul, uh, poet Paul, to to say a few words um, for the intermission. Ready, ready, and raring to go, Steve. Yeah, thank you, Paul. We're all listening. Another project delivered on time. I think you'll find Steve here. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, no title as yet, but here we go. Overhead, underhead, value added free. Project controls are so much more you see, but at what cost? A fraction of everything that can be lost. Risk reduction needs no introduction. A lack of leadership vision can easily become a messiah never risen. Project control equals the embers that can't be stamped out, avoiding the forest fire we can all do without. Setup is all, lift off or stall. We have to become a rocket scientist on time, above quality, to reduce the risk. Like the seven dwarfs, more highs than hoes, correcting as we go, using the disciplines that already exist. Stick or twist, what's on your wish list? Integrating the skills that have always been there, passing on new thinking, knowledge and experience to share. Creating the intended, not coincidence. Remember, New broom sweep good, but old broom know all the corners, and it never rains in California. The sun will come out tomorrow, but what if it doesn't? A culture of transpar transparency should be a constant current. Even with bells and whistles, are you really pulling up thistles? It's more than admin, it's putting Bob Marley and the whalers together and now we're jamming. We've lost sight of Pandora's data box and what, it, and what it was meant to encase. In short, we can easily become lost in space. Projects are from Mars, businesses are from Venus, a shared vision of heaven will redeem us. At the end of the day, it needs to be delivered on planet Earth and all we all want is the baby, not a virgin birth. Well done. Round of applause. Good I've stuff. I've got to thank Mo and Jonathan. I mean, it was pure gold they were giving me. <laughs> well, Jonathan, Jonathan should get into poetry. How do you know I haven't? Ah, uh, you might be. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Paul. That, that language, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 publish, we'll publish a non for that. Uh, just a few messages. Um, I circulated the diagrams which are trying to outline and, and summarise the uh, space that we're going to be entering as a controls community that I would like the forthcoming British standard to encapsulate and, and, and encourage people to, to press for. Um, I circulated that last week. Uh, I called for a review meeting separately for a week Friday. So uh, I think that's the 29th, is it? Something like that? 28th? Well, seven days plus this. Next Friday, week Friday, 11 o'clock, and we will be discussing those diagrams. And again, that will be a contributing factor to, to some of the issues that have, that have arisen in this particular session today. So if you can make it, that's great. There was a, an allusion to project speed. I think uh, one of the um, uh, things that David Hancock has been, uh, who's a director of construction at the IPA, the Infrastructure and Projects Authority Cabinet Office, has been up to his neck in, has been uh, working on that. And uh, he'll be with us, don't forget, on the 3rd of December to discuss that in uh, conversation, I think, with Nat Moyes, who is probably on the, the call today as well, to interview him. Uh, next week, Rushi Singh and Carol Devaney will be discussing diversity. What's it really all about? Hey, hey Steve, can I just say one more thing? Yeah. Sorry. I just come up with a great title to on, project then. and to project and serve. To project and serve. Okay. Right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a cold weekend. Wrap up warm. Take care. Look after yourselves. Uh, a thoroughly uh, entertaining uh, and uh, thought provoking session today. So great to see you. Brilliant poem. See you next Thursday. Bye bye. Great. Well done, guys.